Hello, this is Dr. Greg Goglin, Fair State University, and what I'm going to cover in this video is how resource assignment can impact project timelines, uh, also how it can impact budgets. And one last aspect that we're going to bring in towards the end is how safety can come into play in this whole thing. And safety, I mean the safety factor in the overall project estimates and project deadlines. So what I have created is a Microsoft project project plan. And this is simply a project plan to build a house. Now, certainly this is not ready for uh, building a, a, a real house, but it's got some pretty close estimates in terms of uh, some of the tasks that would be involved. And I also, in this resources names, I have some resources assigned to the various tasks. So for example, dig foundation would take 16 hours starting on June 1st, ends on June 2nd, and is assigned general labor. So there's only re one resource assigned and that's the general labor person. And what I had created uh, previously is a resource sheet. And so you can see these are the resources that I have uh, potentially available for this project. And uh, they've got an, an initial, and if there's an A on the end of the initial, that means it's an apprentice. So that's an easy way for me to, to look when I'm um, working with the resources, if it's an apprentice or not. And these are the rates. So it's $50 an hour for the standard rate, 75 for overtime. Uh, and different rates for the different uh, skill levels and such. So when we go back to the Gantt chart, uh, we've assigned only one person. So that means the estimates for the duration uh, remain the same. So what this is implying is that the general labor, labor person uh, can get the dig foundation done in 16 hours. Now, you might say, well, let's add extra resources to that. And we could, um, and that would reduce the duration. And instead of ending on uh, Friday, the 29th of, of September, we might end a little bit earlier. But something you have to keep in mind is that when you create an estimate, is the estimate uh, a very good estimate for uh, the particular person that is gonna perform the task? Or is it a general estimate uh, that might apply to multiple people. So for example, in this general labor for the dig foundation, this person might be really skilled at digging foundations and has several years of experience using the heavy machinery and so forth. You can't just assign someone else and expect that same level of competence. So for example, if we assigned a apprentice, it, it might not just be two people. So now it's eight hours instead of 16, it might be maybe 12 hours or something like that. Um, with Microsoft Project, you can set baselines when you initially set up the baseline so you can see what your um, original start date was, original end date, your original uh, time estimates, as well as your budget estimates. So the budget for this would be from the resource rates. So for example, 16 hours at the general labor, if you remember at the uh, resource sheet, the general labor was $50 an hour. So 16 hours at $50 an hour would mean that for that task, we're gonna spend $800 in labor. We are not capturing the material costs. We're only capturing the labor costs in this example. And you can run reports and there's a nice dashboard report that's available for a cost overview. And the various people that are assigned to these project tasks uh, comes out to $64,680. And you can see down here, here's the $800 for the Dig Foundation. And you can see roughly by this cost status chart how much each of the uh, tasks are actually uh, estimated to cost. Um, so we can go back to the Gantt chart and let's pretend that uh, we can add another person 
So we do the, the, the drop down on the, the general labor and we'll add the apprentice. And this is currently set up to assume that uh, the apprentice will work just as fast as a laborer. So it'll just basically cut this in half. So then we have to uh, reduce the duration, keep the same amount of work. And it goes down to eight hours. And now you can see we're done one day earlier because it was the 29th of September. And both the labor resources are listed here. Note that the red uh, Gantt chart items are the ones that are the critical path uh, that shows when the project will end. So the ones in blue, uh, this extra line after them shows how much slack time there is. So in other words, as long as those tasks get done by the end of this line, uh, they're okay. Uh, they can get done earlier, but if they go later, then they're going to become the critical path. So let's go back now. We added that labor apprentice and take a look at the report. And that dashboard was the cost overview. And we actually went down in costs a little bit. So now the foundation is only costing $640 because we're using some less expensive labor to help do half of the project. Um, so that may or may not be valid depending on how good our apprentice is, but that is just something to keep in mind when you're creating estimates, um, how much time it will take for the people that are actually gonna be assigned to the task. Um, there's one other thing that we did not add, and that is the project safety. Now, a lot of people will put an estimate instead of eight hours, they'll put 10 hours uh, and build in kind of a fudge factor for each of the tasks. Uh, what we like to do is put a safety factor in at the end of the project and maybe a percentage, 15% or something like that. Well, we've got basically about... Um, three months, four months worth of work. So uh, let's pretend we're gonna need an extra couple of weeks. So an extra couple of weeks would be uh, 80 hours. Okay, and we wanna have that safety factor dependent on task 18, which is the repair finish for the house. So when we do that, of course it will become a critical path item, but we are actually going to tell people that the project is going to be done on the 12th, whereas right now, uh, internally, we kind of think it'll be done on the 28th if all things go well. But we've, we've given ourselves this little bit of a buffer just in case. Let's go back to this project report. And this is the cost report. You can see it's still the 64520 and we have not actually built in a labor cost for this safety factor uh, of 80 hours. Uh, we've only built in the time buffer. And if our projects gets done, say, on October 10th or 12th or something like that, it would be a success in terms of timeline. But we have gone into a cost overrun. Uh, and we have not accounted for that. So we should assign some sort of a labor uh, rate for this safety factor. And there's a number of ways that we can, we can do that. Um, let's just go back to the, to the re resource sheet and let's just put in this uh, safety labor. And, you, you know, you probably want to use a little bit um, higher rate than, than average in case it's the electricians or somebody like that that has to come back. So let's make it, uh, well, let's just use the electrician rate. Whoops, it's safety. Go over here, go 90 and 135. And then when we go back to the Gantt chart, we can assign this as the safety labor. And then when we run our a report for the costs, it's $71,720. That's assuming we exhaust all of the safety labor and then that safety labor actually um, is spent out. 
Now, if we get done early, or if uh, we maybe get done even on the 10th or 12th of, of October, but we have a less expensive labor, uh, then we maybe have a little bit of budget money left over. Um, but, but this is a way where you can uh, actually put in a safety factor for both the project time and budget. Now, there's a couple of other things to look at in this particular project in that the frame house is a very long task, as is the roofing. These 120, 140 hour tasks are the ones you really want to exploit and try to get those down by assigning extra resources. But also notice we've got this little red uh, mark, this little red person icon next to those tasks, where they're all assigned to the carpenter. And you can see by looking at the Gantt chart, we've got a carpenter in blue and a carpenter in red. Um, and if we go to actually um, what we call the, the resource usage chart, we can see that that carpenter is going to have to work 16 hours a day to get that done, uh, which is not sustainable. And the carpenter might not be available for that. And if something happens to that carpenter, then uh, we're going to really have have challenge. So we might want to do a couple of other things. Um, if we go back to the Gantt chart, one way we can, uh, well, we can simply level this to say only let the carpenter work eight hours a day. And that's going to, uh, instead of 16, that's going to bump our timeline way out. And that might not be acceptable. So maybe what we could do is uh, put in a carpenter apprentice uh, to, to work with the carpenter. And then we have the same thing. Uh, reduce the duration because there's two people working, but same amount of work, still 160 hours. But you see, those are not the critical path tasks. Uh, this one is the critical path task, the side the house, and then the one next to it, install windows, are the critical path tasks. By adding the apprentice and assuming that the apprentice and the carpenter can work twice as fast as just the carpenter, this would reduce our overall cost, um, but it does not resolve that bottleneck. So maybe what we want to do is go back into here and let's add a second carpenter. We'll just call them Carpenter 2. So instead of C, we'll, we'll call them C2. Same rate, $60 an hour, $90 an hour for overtime. So let's go back to our Gantt chart. And on these tasks, the side house, let's change that to uh, Carpenter 2 and not Carpenter. And we'll do the same here. Install the windows, Carpenter 2, not the Carpenter. And we have eliminated that. We still are uh, on the, the 12th of um, October, but we can do, we can do other things. Uh, since these are critical path items, it's probably more important to have the apprentice work on this task than on that one. So let's take them off of this task because those, that's a non-critical path item task. We've got to adjust the duration uh, back to what it was, 160 hours. But on this critical path task, let's put in the apprentice. And I've got to click on the right thing. Reduce the duration because there's two people working on it. And then we can do the same thing here. Carpenter Apprentice. Reduce the duration. And now you can see we're back into September by just having the apprentice work on those critical path tasks. What we may end up doing, um, if you're doing this after the project has been agreed upon, what you may actually end up doing though is adding more safety now uh, to account for that to keep your um, project due on the 12th of October. Um, may or may not be 
what you really want to do because you might want to actually create the best project plan up front and then baseline that. Uh, but you can see that this does have, a, have an impact on the timelines when you uh, assign multiple uh, resources to the critical path tasks. You don't need to assign them to the others. And let's go for one last look at the cost because remember it was $71,000 cost. We're under that a couple of thousand. Uh, because we reduce the costs of the uh, task by using that apprentice. And we could further reduce costs by perhaps putting in apprentices with the electricians and so forth. Uh, but you get the general idea. So that is uh, using Microsoft Project uh, to illustrate the use of uh, resources and how resources may impact the overall timeline, and they also impact the budget, but also how the budget uh, can be impacted by using um, perhaps resources in the right spot uh, that are at a lower labor rate where you don't lose any efficiency. So I hope you found that insightful. Uh, we will try some other projects and some other features at another time.